Hello friends, welcome back to the lecture series on high voltage engineering. In this lecture, we are going to study peak reading voltmeter and it is a peak reading AC voltmeter which is used for the measurement of high frequency, high voltage and impulse voltage. This particular method is also helpful for the measurement of impulse voltage. So impulse voltage is the voltage which attains its peak value with a short time and takes somewhat more time for the discharge or to settle to its 50% of the voltage and that is called as impulse voltage. In short, the time period required to reach to its peak value is much less than the time period required to settle to its 50% of the voltage value that is called as the impulse voltage. In case of even the sinusoidal voltage, whatever the high frequency, high voltage which is attained, that is the peak value which is attained by the sinusoidal waveform is going to be noted down or going to be measured with the help of this method called as a peak reading AC voltmeter. Peak reading itself indicates whatever the peak value which is developed, which is attained by the waveform that is maybe on positive half cycle or negative half cycle that is during positive half cycle or during negative half cycle is noted with the help of a voltmeter. So that method is called as a peak reading AC voltmeter. This peak value of AC waveform is necessary whenever there is need to obtain the maximum dielectric. Dielectric means the insulating strength of the material. So insulating strength of the material or the maximum insulating strength of the material that can be found out by giving the peak value of the voltage and how much voltage is applying there for the testing purpose it should be measured and therefore we have this particular method to understand. The problem with this method is whenever there is a non-sinusoidal waveform present means if the waveform is sinusoidal then the peak reading can uh, easily be taken but if the waveform is non-sinusoidal then it is somewhat difficult to have the proper reading and the RMS value of the voltage is not correct. And these are the reasons needs to separate the peak value instrument. So therefore, we have to use this peak reading AC voltmeters for the measurement purpose. Now, there are few methods which are shown here as series capacitor peak voltmeter means the series capacitor is connected in series with the voltmeter. It is developed by a chirp Forte Q and therefore the method is named with this. Another is called as a digital peak reading meter and third one is peak voltmeters with potential dividers. So let us start with the first method that is series capacitor peak voltmeter which is also called as chirp Forte Q method. Now in this particular circuit you can see the capacitor is connected in series with the meter. So this particular meter measures the value called as DC current and hence the meter which is used as DC ammeter. This is rectified with the help of a diodes which are placed here. There are two diodes which are placed D1 and D2. The D1 diode works whenever there is a reverse bias condition and D2 bias operates whenever there is a forward bias condition. So during positive half cycle, the diode D2 operates and it bypasses the supply towards the ground terminal. D1 diode operates whenever the negative half cycle is attained by the waveform. 
and this negative half cycle is allowed and hence that amount of current let us say that current is the capacitor current which passes through this line and hence this unit so this c is the capacitor which is placed here d1 and d2 be the diodes and i is nothing but the ammeter that is specifically dc ammeter there is need to protect the metering device and hence a protective device is placed here now when a capacitor is connected to a sinusoidal voltage source so this sinusoidal voltage source value is noted here it is vm sin of omega t so v is equal to vm sin of omega t it indicates it's a sinusoidal voltage where v or even u is the instantaneous value of voltage so this sinusoidal voltage is applied here ac sinusoidal voltage is applied here on this point which is to be measured so the charging current ic passes through this circuit and this ic can be written as c dv by dt where the voltage v is the rms value of the voltage v is the rms value of the voltage and as it is time dependent therefore we can say that it's a sinusoidal voltage now if a half wave rectifier is used that is the diodes are used the arithmetic mean that is medium of the rectifier current is proportional to the peak value of the ac voltage so whatever the current which we are going to measure is nothing but the amount of voltage which is to be measured so this current can be written as i is equal to 1 upon t as it is represented as arithmetic mean so 1 upon t integration i c d t let us put the value of this current so what i get is 1 upon t integration now that let the integration limit is for full cycle t1 to t2 and the value is c dv by dt now here the c is capacitance therefore it is written with c upon t with the integration t1 to t2 dv here this dt dt get cancelled now i get the value for this current and the arithmetic mean can be written as 2 vm this is also shown in the waveform which is drawn on the next slide so two times the maximum value of the voltage is what the integration of this dv now 1 upon t is nothing but the frequency therefore i get as twice f c into vm that is what the value of the charging that is what the value of the current which is going to be measured by the meter and therefore as we need to find the value of vm that can be written as i upon 2 f into c where this i is the dc current read by the dc ammeter c is the capacitance of the capacitor and therefore this method which is derived said called as chubb voltage cube method this is specifically used only for a measurement of peak value and that can be attained by using the rectifier placed in the unit so the diode d1 is used to rectify the ac current in negative cycle so during negative cycle during negative cycle diode d1 acts as a reverse bias so this diode d1 is used to rectify that ac current in negative cycle why why during positive half cycle d2 is forward bias so a negative half cycle d1 is forward bias and during positive half cycle d2 is forward bias so d1 operates during negative half cycle 
and D2 operates during positive half cycle. But during positive half cycle, this bypasses the value towards the ground terminal. But during negative half cycle, which is shown here, during negative half cycle, which is shown here, this diode D1 acts as forward bias. It rectifies that current, that current which is measured by the meter or less DC meter. So this arrangement is suitable only of positive or negative half cycle, where we have used it for negative half cycle measurement and hence is valid only when both half cycles are symmetrical and equal. So we can say that this is what the disadvantage of this particular method that both the waveforms positive half cycle and negative half cycle is to be symmetrical. But if these are positive half and negative half cycles are not symmetrical, then there is an error in the meter. So this method will not be suitable. Even if this waveform means the waveform which is given to the input, if it is having more than one peak, that is maximum peaks, maximum values, then again, this method fails. Now, the charging current through the capacitor changes. The charging current through the capacitor changes its polarity within one half cycle. So now let us understand the waveform which is plotted here. So this is the waveform plotted for the current versus time, that is capacitor current versus time and the instantaneous voltage which is to be measured versus time. Now this capacitor is showing the pure sinusoidal waveform for a period of T, for a time period of capital T. The voltage which appears, as we know that for a capacitor, current leads voltage. So capacitor current leads voltage by an angle, by a certain angle here, that angle is mentioned, indicated here. So this is what the value of the voltage which is attained, which is two times Vm, which is two times Vm. So this is what the waveform which is shown and that says the variation of the charge capacitor current and the voltage with respect to the time. Another figure where which explains us the uh, voltage waveform with harmonic contain that shows the false maximum. The charging current through this capacitor changes its polarity, as I said, within one half cycle itself. So you can see when this has multiple peaks. So here, this is the first peak at time period T1. Then it attains negative value, which is shown at time period T2. After it attains again another maximum value, and therefore, this maximum value is called as a false maxima. As this waveform is non-sinusoidal, which contains harmonics, and therefore the current waveform, therefore this current waveform, which is drawn as this kind of waveform, which is on the positive side, which is on the positive side. So this shaded area give the reverse current in any one of the half cycle. So in at any one half cycle, we get this reverse current. Within that period, that subtracts from the net current. Hence, the reading of the meter will be less as this particular portion or even this particular portion is subtracted from the net reading. It is subtracted from the net reading. Hence, the reading of the meter will be less and is not proportional to Vm. So what we need, we need the value of that Vm 
which is proportional to the current which is measured by the dc ammeter so that's all with this understanding of the peak reading voltmeter that is first method called as the series capacitor peak voltmeter now due to these are disadvantages we have another method for discussion that is called as the digital a digital peak reading meter in this case you can see whatever the frequency we have that frequency is given to the gate circuit which is indicated as level 2 or in block diagram it is indicated with number on high voltage side which is applied here so this this particular side is connected to high voltage that is to be measured now what is kind of high voltage it is ac high voltage high frequency or high frequency high voltage based on these number of turns on this side of the unit here we have the capacitor connected with the diodes d1 and d2 for the rectification and there is a use of a unit resistance so instead of directly measuring the rectified current which we have seen in last method a a digital current can be measured or digital value of the voltage can be measured so whatever the signal which is generated on this side of the resistance that is being converted into the frequency with the help of voltage to frequency converter so this basically diodes combination allows a current and that current is being converted to the frequency with the help of voltage to frequency converter that converter frequency that converted frequency is given to the gate circuit so this mean frequency fm is compared with the frequency which we are getting on the gate side on this side of the gate which is coming from the primary winding of the unit so this gate circuit basically compares the mean frequency from the voltage to frequency converter and the frequency from this primary side of the unit and then it is given to the counter for the indication purpose so this counter read outs that difference and accordingly generates the signal and that is nothing but the peak value of the voltage so what the circuit says this is the digital peak reading meter and that is basically used for the voltage measurement purpose in previous methods the measurements are done directly but in this method a proportional analog voltage signal is generated with the help of voltage to frequency converter it is been converted into the proportional mean frequency that is fm this frequency ratio that is fm upon the supply frequency from the primary side of the transformer unit is measured by the gate circuit that gives the ac power frequency f and there is a counter that opens for an adjustable number of periods that is p by f and during this interval the number of impulses counted is n so this is what another way of doing the measurement of the voltage that is peak voltage now let us understand the third method of the peak voltage measurement called as the potential divider for the purpose of potential divider the capacitors are used so you can see there is capacitor c1 and c2 are connected in the unit in the circuit which consist of resistance r2 diode d2 for the diode d for the rectification purpose 
and the filter unit CS and RD that is connected to the meter which measures the value of the voltage that is called as meter voltage. So the peak voltmeters using capacitance dividers designed by this holder which is shown in the diagram. The voltage across C2 is made use of in charging the storage capacitor CS. So basically this particular voltage is used to charge the capacitor CS through diode D. RD is a discharge resistor. So during positive half cycle, we can say if we have during positive half cycle, this diode D operates. So it acts as a forward bias and therefore it charges the capacitor to the peak value of its voltage. During negative half cycle, the diode acts as a reverse bias. So during positive half cycle, the diode is forward bias and therefore it charges the capacitor to the value to the peak value of the voltage V2. During negative half cycle, the diode D reverse bias. Right? So this is forward bias and this one is reverse bias. And therefore, this capacitor CS get discharged towards the discharge resistor RD. Now, this whatever the voltage which come across this resistance RD is basically measured with the help of a voltmeter which is connected across it. That voltmeter may be the electrostatic voltmeter or it may be a high impedance VT VM. CS is basically the charged to a voltage proportional to the peak value to be measured. So this, as I said, it charges to the peak value of the voltage. Now, the discharge time constant depends on CS RD product and is designed to be about 1 to 10 seconds. As minimum the time period of discharge it is quite easier to measure the voltage across RD discharge resistance. So this gives rise to a discharge error which depends on the frequency of the supply frequency. So this is what the important point which is mentioned in point number 7. And for that purpose there is need to do some modifications which is done by the Halfley which is shown in the next their circuits. So I am I'm discussing only this particular part of this potential divider unit. The other circuits are basically not required that much because that is what the extension to this particular circuit only. So hopefully you understood all the three methods which I have said to you in this lecture. The first method which I said is series capacitor peak voltmeter. Second be the peak reading voltmeter and third be the peak voltmeter with potential divider. So thank you so much guys.